everyone, I'm Jamie Permayans, and I'm here to show you Barbecued Baby Back Ribs 101. This is a classic recipe, and it's really for all of you folks who are on the fence. You really want to do ribs on your grill, but you may not have tried it yet because you think it might be a little bit difficult. It's really not. It involves a little bit of time um, and putting things together in the right order, but it's very, very simple, actually. Um, so let me show you the basics. And I like to think of this in terms of five essentials, okay? The first one, obviously the ribs themselves, baby back ribs. The second one is wood smoke. This is really important to authentic barbecue. I've got some hickory chips soaking in water. Third essential is a spice rub. And I've given you a recipe for a really good rub, or you could certainly use your favorite rub from the store. Um, also, the sauce, I've made one, and you could make this version, um, or again, buy one at the store. And then the fifth element is the mop, uh, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, that's in, based it onto the ribs to keep them nice and moist. So back to uh, essential number one. These are the baby back ribs. They are uh, um, a little smaller and um, more tender than the spare ribs, and they cook a little bit faster, so they're easier in that sense. Um, although you don't want to get them too small, you want them to be fairly meaty. So look at them from on, on high here, look at, down on them and just make sure there's a good amount of meat there. Um, if they're really, really thin, if you can actually see the bone coming through, that's not a good sign. That means basically the butcher has given the meat to the pork chops rather than the ribs. Because on the animal, the pork chops, uh, which come from the loin, are right next to the ribs. And so, uh, you want the butcher to have given you a fair amount of meat. Having said that, sometimes there's a little bit of kind of scraggly meat on the end, and you want to trim that stuff off. So I'm just going to trim off the, the tips. And um, I had my butcher remove the membrane. There is a membrane on the back of the ribs on the bone side here. And you want to um, ask the butcher to do that or do it yourself. I show you how in some other videos. Um, it's just, a, it's just a barrier between the spices and the meat and also the wood smoke. And it's tough. Um, and it just gets tougher as it cooks. So it's important to, to just take that off. These are now trimmed and peeled. And I'm just going to season them with the, with the spice rub. So this has got the classic flavors, you know, the chili powder, the paprika, the garlic, the salt, the pepper some cumin in, in, in here. And you want to be pretty generous with this. You know, it's got to stand up to the other flavors, including the wood smoke. That's going to be a, a very obvious element here. And really the magic, I think, in making good ribs is sort of the balance of all these elements. I think the meat should, should be the star of the show. I mean, this is pork. Um, so you want to make sure you're able to taste that. Um, but then the other element should be sort of supporting, supporting actors. And what I like to do is, is season and then let it sit for a good 20 to 30 minutes before it actually goes on the grill because this helps to develop a little bit of a crust on the surface of the meat. What happens is the salt in the rub begins to draw a little bit of moisture out and um, that moisture begins to to mix with the spices and then when you put it on the grill and start to cook it it creates this nice outer crust very flavorful crust so um, just leave it out until the surface looks a little moist a little little tacky on the surface and that's going to be your indication that it's time to go to the uh, to the grill now today I'm using a uh, a rib rack which is a really great device for a few reasons. Number one, I can get more ribs cooking at the same time. If they were to lay flat on the grill, they would take up more space. I couldn't do as many. So um, that's nice. Also, because they're standing up like this as opposed to lying down flat, some of the fat that's in there is going to render out more quickly. It's going to drip down into the fire um, and, uh, and give the ribs more flavor. And they're not going to be greasy in the end. So. I'm going to let these sit for a little bit and go ahead and make my mop, tell you what that's all about. Okay, so the mop is essentially just a flavorful liquid that you use to baste the ribs. 
periodically so that they stay moist and get a little bit more delicious. So in this case I'm using some apple juice and a little bit of uh, apple cider vinegar. And I'm going to use a little bit of the barbecue sauce that I made for putting on the ribs toward the end. So all these flavors are kind of combining. Here's that sauce. A couple of tablespoons of that. And then just to really improve the odds of things tasting fabulous, I'm going to add a little bit of butter. <laughs> and I'm just going to bring that to a simmer and let it cook for uh, a few minutes until everything combines nicely. And that way, my ribs are going to stay super moist and be super delicious. Now I've got my grill set up for indirect low heat. That means that the charcoal is burning off to one side of the grill. And I have some wood chips soaking in water. I just want to drain them of the extra water and scatter a few handfuls over the coals to get that first layer of smoke going. The ribs themselves are going to cook over the opposite side of the grill, so over the water pan. And they're going to cook that way very gently for a few hours. This is really the key to making them tender. So let them go for the first hour with that wonderful aromatic smoke getting into the meat. Of course, during that time, the temperature is bound to drop. So after about an hour, you're going to add probably 8 to 10 briquettes just to maintain the temperature. Ideal temperature is about 250 to 300 degrees. At that time, it's a good good idea to now add a little bit more uh, wood to the fire and you might also want to start basting or mopping the ribs uh, particularly if there are any areas of the ribs that are looking a little dry they're cooking a little faster than other parts this is going to protect them and keep them really juicy and, and sweet and delicious let them go another hour or so uh, feed the fire as necessary give it a little bit more of a mop after about three hours, you're going to notice that they're quite dark. Um, the meat will have shrunk back from the ends of the bones a little bit. And if you pick up a slab and bend it backward, you'll notice that the meat along the bone just begins to fall apart. It just tears very, very easily. So that's a good sign that you've got super tender ribs. And you can eat them now. They'd be fabulous. They'd be referred to as dry ribs not meaning that they're actually dry, but just meaning they don't have sauce on top. Or you could go ahead and uh, add some sauce as that final layer of flavor. I like a little sauce, not too much. I think that sometimes people overdo it and they get this big gloppy mess on there and kind of overwhelm the ribs. But a thin layer, uh, a kind of glaze works really, really nicely to finish the ribs. And now you've got this sort of harmonious effect of the, the spices, the wood, of course the meat itself, you've got the mop, and you've got this nice uh, glaze on top. And this, my friends, is one of America's great contributions to the world of food. Beautiful barbecued ribs. Get out there and smoke some of your own.